Hi, I'm Tom Freyberg here at the IDA World Congress in Sydney, Australia. Pleased to be joined by Gavin Montonda, head of the water sector at NEOM from Saudi Arabia. Gavin, good to see you again. Nice to see you again, Tom. Very good. So, uh, Gavin, I, I think arguably you have one of the most exciting jobs in the global water sector right now. You're, you're head of the entire water sector within NEOM. Um, I think most people will be aware of the, the grand vision of Saudi and, and what you're going to achieve there, but just give us a kind of couple of minutes overview of, of the kind of what you're trying to achieve there from a water strategy point of view? Um, I think when you sit on the outside and you look at it, you'll say it's an exciting job, but let me tell you, when you're sitting on the inside and having to develop out this, uh, you don't really see the exciting part, you just <laughs> see the pressure part. Um, but essentially what we're trying to do is develop out a water utility uh, in an area that, where there's nothing today, so a complete green field. Uh, but doing that in a sustainable manner, manner uh, uh, not only sustainable but enhancing the environment. Uh, as an example, stopping all abstraction of groundwater uh, and moving towards desalination. Uh, but also doing desalination not with a, uh, fossil fuels but doing it with completely renewable energy and not putting the brown back into the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about uh, zero discharge. Uh, and, and you know, if, if we go through all the sustainable development goals, uh, the UN SDGs, you will see how many this actually impacts. Um, so it's uh, it's a constrict, uh, it's a restrictive way of us developing things out because you always got to take into account that you have renewable energy. Uh, so when you're developing out the pipelines uh, and you're developing out the pump stations and the storage reservoirs you've got to take into account that you may have only, only have energy during the day mm -hmm. in order to do the pumping. Uh, and then take into account that you could utilize that water as a battery in the evenings and generate energy. So there's, there's a strong link between energy and water when it comes to having a renewable energy system. Uh, but that's just one aspect of it. You know, we also have the district cooling side of it, which is traditionally one of the biggest consumers of energy and water. Uh, and how we manage that uh, in NEOM is going to be very important because um, we have to be zero carbon uh, and uh, uh, by 2030 uh, and we have to then compensate for all the construction that we've done uh, and that's where brine processing becomes really important uh, if we can um, get brine processing recognized as a carbon credit uh, because we are taking CO2 out of the sea and solidifying it or making it into a product, uh, it'll go a long way towards being carbon, let's say carbon positive uh, inside NEOM from a water perspective. Um, and then of course we have all the wastewater treatment plants that we have to develop and our strategy there uh, is to ensure 100% recycle of all wastewater. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time make sure that we are uh, 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 energy neutral, so generating our own energy from the wastewater, uh, which is being done around the world today. It's not, not something new uh, and taking the products from the wastewater and, and converting it into useful products like fertilizer, struvat, etc. And then adding that together with the brown processing, getting more products to the, to the uh, further down the, the value chain so that you, uh, you, know, you become profitable in the whole, uh, in the whole environment of, uh, of reutilization. Uh, and then from what I've just said, you can see that that creates our circular economy in the mm -hmm. Really interesting stuff, Gavin. And I think the, the beauty of this is Neon can develop out its own laws and regulations around these different elements to take place. Uh, yes, I think it is an advantage to have a blank sheet of paper uh, in, in one way. Um, I'll talk about the other way in a minute where it's not an advantage, but uh, it is an advantage in that we can, because we have strict reg uh, rules and regulations that we have to adhere to, we have to have new laws that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that are set around those those, those uh, regulation, well, new laws that are set around those re visionary requirements, which are essentially renewable energy, uh, no discharge to the environment, living in harmony with nature, uh, enhancing the nature. So um, all, of those, and all of those aspects are, are, are the vision of NEON. So the laws are written around ensuring that we adhere to, the, to that vision. Uh, and then developing out the regulations like zero liquid discharge um, is, is key to meeting the, those visionary targets, but also key to meeting the sustainable development goals for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So it's a, you know, it's a really positive aspect of it, but 
the other side of it is that we don't have a population and when we're building out all these this infrastructure uh, we're actually planning for the future and the future is never certain so uh, you know the way to do that in a minimum viable product kind of way uh, is to ensure you're not spending too much money up front because you know then it's just not economically sustainable mm -hmm. so we have to do that in a in a in a very careful manner uh, and not uh, and make sure we plan very carefully for the expansion uh, of, a, of a region that has no population today. Absolutely. And finally, to kind of add urgency to all the development that's going on, you mentioned during the uh, keynote address here about securing the winter games and actually the infrastructure and the water and the desalination infrastructure that has to be developed based on that timeline as well. Yes, this is very key for us. Uh, you know, we have, uh, I know it, it sounds a little bit strange that Saudi Arabia has the, the winter games, but we do have mountains that are uh, two kilometers high, uh, and when, in winter it's zero degrees Celsius every night, you know, for two months. So, you know, the environment is there for us, and we have been testing out snow making machines, uh, and, and it's, it's very operational. Uh, and I think, well, our, Trojina has been announced uh, as, a, as, a, as a region that we are going to develop. Um, but it, it is, in a way, it does say, okay, this is the deadline that you have to adhere to, and we know we have to adhere to that deadline. Uh, but that planning has been going on for a, for a long time now, for you know, more than two years, so it's, it's not, not a surprise to us, and, and we're well prepared to be able to meet those, those schedules. Excellent. Well, uh, Gavin, always great to hear from you. Thanks for the update on the continued developments of uh, Neom, and look forward to seeing how everything's uh, playing out. Appreciate your time. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Thank Tom. you.